A very big change in the country's migrant policy, Title 42. The policy set during fourth during the pandemic era that allowed quick expulsion of many migrants at the border will be lifted on Thursday. Now officials are bracing for a new immigration surge, one that could bring thousands to the border. Migrants will be in crisis as soon as next week. It will be a humanitarian crisis because we are not prepared. Joining us right now, former U.S. Secretary of Homeland Security and partner at Paul Weiss, Rifkin, Wharton and Garrison, Jay Johnson. Nice to have you back on Good Day New York. Good morning. This was your forte, Homeland Security. We, we keep hearing about Title 42 expiring. Like, and, and like, is that, that's it? We can't do anything else? Well, first, Rosanna, Title 42 was a public health authority that was put in place three years, three years ago in the depths of COVID <clears throat> was bound to go away sometime. It was never going to be an indefinite authority to send migrants back over the border. What we now need to do is continually emphasize the enforcement aspect of our policy on the southern border. One of the things I learned when I owned this problem for three years is that illegal immigration is a very information sensitive phenomenon. It reacts sharply to perceived changes in our enforcement policy here in the United States. So, and, and the smugglers amplify that message. So if the perception is we're clamping down on the border, we're tightening what's happening, that word quickly gets back to Central America. If the perception is the border's open, everybody, now's time to go, you're gonna see a very quick response to that. So when I was in office, I would continually send the message, we are a fair, humane country, but there is a right way to come here and a wrong way to come here. If you come here the wrong way, we will send you back. I would literally go to Honduras and Guatemala, to the airports, and greet migrants coming back on the ICE aircraft or bring the press with me so people could see we were sending people back. Now, <clears throat> in the current situation, the current situation is much bigger than it was seven, uh, eight years and, ago. And are we doing and, enough to send that message? I mean... Uh, <clears throat> the administration lately has been sending an enforcement message. The other thing that they've but done... But sending 1,500 agents down there who's going to help with processing, is that what we need? 1,500... U.S. military can only act in support because of this concept in the law called a posse comitatus. The U.S. military cannot participate in domestic law enforcement activities. They're there in support. The, th the thing that I think is a very good idea, which we have to really build on, are regional processing centers in Guatemala, in Colombia, elsewhere in South America and Central America to give people who are desperate uh, a lawful, safe pathway to apply for asylum and come here in an orderly manner. So we need to set these things up uh, all over the, all over South America, all over Central America, and highlight the fact that we're we're doing that. I, I, I got to ask though, because here in the U.S., it takes about six years to process an asylum claim. So when you want to set up these processing centers throughout Central America, do you think that time is going to resolve itself maybe a little bit quicker? Because uh, you still need the manpower well, to do that. Well, the way to resolve the backlog in asylum cases are more immigration judges mm -hmm. to hear these cases. Mm -hmm. We don't have enough immigration judges. We yeah. need more uh, to more expeditiously uh, resolve these cases. They're not complex. They're not difficult cases. Mm -hmm. The problem is that it's a two-phase process. The bar on the front end for an asylum claim to establish credible fear is very low, yeah. and the bar on the back end to ultimately get asylum is very high. Mm -hmm. People know that, and they know that getting over that initial hurdle is relatively easy, and then they stay here for five, of six, five, and six the, years. And another issue, too, uh, on the back of the federal government is the fact that, you know, U.S. employers cannot hire illegal immigrants. That is against the law, and it takes them, unless they receive that asylum claim, they can't work. So why is that also not being addressed right now, especially because it's straining our resources for them not to be able to work legally, and we have to provide uh, for In that many legally. circumstances, once you apply for asylum, you can get some form of work authorization. Mm -hmm. that, that, that can happen, that does happen. Um, but look, this is a big problem, and it will take, and it must take a sustained effort through multiple administrations to address. Oof. So the mayor's office uh, issued um, a statement on migrants. He said, we need other elected officials around the state and country to do their part and emulate 
The humane and compassion approach New York City has taken over the past year. Instead, we've been met with racist rhetoric, reprehensible threats from the head of the country that will be tasked with caring for less than one quarter of one percent of the asylum seekers who come to New York. The bottom line is, I mean, the mayor of New York City says it's costing so much. There's no more room at the inn, so yeah. to speak. They, and now he wants to send them to other parts of New York City, not being met with, um, obviously, open arms. But what can we do? What can we literally do at this point to stop this? So there needs to be a nationally coordinated effort to resettle migrants into the interior of this country, much like the nationally coordinated effort we had seven or eight years ago for refugee resettlement, where <clears throat> the Obama administration was calling governors in various different states, uh, reaching out, and not leave it to the governor of Texas or the governor of Florida to decide to send people to Port Authority bus terminal. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I can understand the angst in Rockland County. Uh, what I'd say to people in Rockland County and upstate, I grew up in Dutchess County. What I'd say is think about communities in South Texas, El Paso, Laredo, Brownsville, McAllen, that have been absorbing this population in much, much larger numbers. Uh, we all have to do our fair share. I'd like to see it better coordinated at the national level. So, so is the current administration getting a failing grade for working out a coordination effort to resettle these migrants? I would like to see them more visibly take on a, that, that, that nationally coordinated effort. So they're not doing their job right now? Well, we're not, we're not at the national level uh, asking country, states across the country to do their fair share. We did, they, did this happen during your administration? The numbers, the problem is much bigger now. Mm -hmm. uh, the numbers then were much smaller, though politically you would have thought the world was coming to an end. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the high in a single year when I was in office was, I think, 468,000. Mm -hmm. You now get that in like a month and a half, Oof. two months. The problem is much bigger because the source countries, Rosanna, not just Central America, but Venezuela, uh, Nicaragua, Cuba, Haiti are now, um, because of the conditions there, people are coming from those countries in droves and the ability of the smugglers to send larger numbers of people is much more sophisticated now than it used to be. Mm. Well, what, it's a fascinating and emotional and uh, kind of draining topic because we all want to see everybody do well and be happy at the same time. It doesn't seem like Anyone's it's a complex happy. topic, and there are no, and no, no one's mm -hmm. happy. You, no you easy go, answers. You go yeah. outside those hotels, they don't look happy as they're sitting right. outside waiting for something to do. Or something, right? Mm -hmm. Jay Johnson, thank you so much. Former head of Homeland Security, now big time attorney. <laughs> <laughs> we appreciate having you on the show. Thank you. Thank you.